Why is the thyroid gland so important? I'm going to explain how it works. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg with Wellness for Life, and if you'd like to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So the thyroid gland, a small insignificant gland that sits uh, right around your Adam's apple, is one of the most important glands in the body and one of the most overlooked and misunderstood. So we're going to talk about first why it's so important and then what is often being overlooked. So the thyroid is the accelerator, if you will. It's the thermostat. It sets the speed and the temperature of the whole body. It determines for every cell in the body how much that cell does of whatever that cell is supposed to do. The thyroid gland makes thyroid hormone, also known as thyroxin, uh, or T4. So the T4 means that the thyroxin hormone in that state has four iodine atoms attached to it. And then it gets into circulation, meaning the blood takes it around. The liver takes one of those iodines off and turns it into T3. And now that thyroid hormone is activated, it's now in its active form and it can do its work. In your body, you have approximately 40 trillion cells. They used to say it was about 100 trillion, but someone recounted, and now the official count is more like somewhere around 40 trillion. And how many of those do you think have thyroid receptors, meaning they depend on the thyroid to tell the cell how much it's supposed to do? Or in other words, without the thyroid telling it what to do without the presence of thyroid hormone, that cell is not going to perform its work the way it's supposed to. It's going to slow down. Well, the answer is every single cell in your body has thyroid hormone receptors. That means when the thyroid gland slows down, every cell in your body slows down. So your metabolism slows down, which can lead to weight gain. So for those people who have cut out the sugar and they've cut back, they exercise and nothing happens to the weight, chances are pretty good that there's some thyroid involvement there. There's an overall reduction in energy production which leads to fatigue or what is popular called uh, chronic fatigue syndrome since everything has to be a syndrome these days. It leads to reduced production of hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. So now you can't digest the food, you get GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease, you get indigestion, you get malabsorption, and on and on and on. You have decreased peristalsis, meaning the motility, the movement of your intestines that are supposed to push the food forward that all slows down, leading to constipation. There is a reduction in the speed of nerve impulses even. So now you have slow thinking and brain fog, lack of focus. And there is a slowdown of anabolism or repair of building things. So what that means is everything that breaks, everything that needs repairing, everything that is degenerated, now it doesn't heal and recover as fast as it could or should. So healing is, is compromised. The list could go on and on and on because every cell in your body could be affected. So this is a big deal and it's one of the most common things that we find in our office. Uh, that the thyroid gland is not working properly. And in the vast majority of cases, it means it's hypothyroid, meaning it is slowed down, it's underperforming. 80 to 90% of hypothyroid, in the Western world at least, is something called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And that means that the thyroid gland is inflamed because of autoimmune attack, that your own body's immune system is attacking it. And the reason it does that is that your immune system is confused because you have degeneration and toxicity. What we have found is that when there is a hypothyroid, 
there is virtually always some component of toxicity or immune problem or pathogen presence that has to be handled before that thyroid can fully recover. So in the medical model, there is a poor understanding of, of what all this means because to them, all they measure is thyroid stimulating hormone, which is a pituitary hormone. It's a hormone that tells the thyroid to produce more hormone. So if you need more thyroid hormone, if the body senses that, hey, things aren't happening fast enough, then there is a message that the, the pituitary senses that there's not enough and now it tells the thyroid to make more thyroid hormone by producing more TSH. So the TSH tells the thyroid to make more T4 and then when there is enough T4 then the T4 feeds back and says okay we have enough. So in the medical model they measure TSH and if it is high, meaning there's not enough thyroid hormone, they simply give you synthetic T4, synthetic thyroxin. And this synthetic hormone feeds back and tells the, th the pituitary that, okay, we have enough. And now, the medic in the medical model, all the criteria are satisfied. But most people at this point still feel really lousy. They don't have the energy, they, they haven't really fixed or improved any of these things. And there's lots of books written on the topic because in order for the thyroid to work, in order for the whole mechanism, for the whole system to do what it's intended, we need the hypothalamus, we need the pituitary, we need the thyroid, the liver, the gut flora, we need your immune system, uh, and we need there to not be toxicity. So in the case of hypothyroid, usually we have several of these that have to be addressed in order for that whole system to recover. We can't just look at one little piece and say, oh look, uh, TSH is high, let's throw in one component and ignore all the others. And that's why people keep feeling really, really bad even though they get enough synthetic thyroid hormone to fix, to normalize the level of TSH. But again, that's not really addressing the problem. It's not allowing the body to go back to functioning with all the systems performing optimally. So what I would suggest, find someone who measures more than just TSH or even better, what we do in our office is we use something called nutrition response testing, which is a different method of evaluating the body and finding imbalances at a very, very early stage and then helping the body address the root of the problem, not just throwing in one thing to try to compensate for something that is low. So let me know if you have more questions on this topic. It is a huge topic and I did a bigger video before, a longer video that explained a little bit more, but I wanted to put it together like this as well because there's so much confusion on the topic. So the longer video you can check out here. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And again, please share this because Hypothyroidism is an enormously common problem and 99% of people out there are just getting synthetic thyroid hormone to remedy and it is not doing much good. So please share this video with as many people as you can and as always, thanks for watching.